Well, this is now a crime and you will be arrested for trying to finish the fight that you didn't start. So the bipolar blade is a potentially harmful thing. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Mournhold, City of Light, city of barely practical, incredibly strange swords, one of which we are going to grab in today's video because, well, we haven't done an artifact guide in quite some time, and God damn it, that is what this channel was built on, and we will keep our foundation strong. So today, in order to find probably Morrowind's strangest weapon, we will first need to begin an equally strange quest because, well, this woman over here is in need of a suitor, and we'll find out in this video just who to hook her up with. So let's begin by speaking to Marina Gilness to set us on the way to the strangest blade in this game. Now, in order to get the lead into this quest, I'm not going to read all of her dialogue here, but you will have to say, meet someone new, please continue, because of course we're incredibly interested here in the latest episode of Mournhold's The Bachelorette. But continue clicking through her dialogue, and then finally here you will get your journal has been updated because this woman is in need of a bedfellow and you're in need of a blade. And because those two things begin with bees, well, they're obviously intertwined, as we will show. So in order to get the uh, partner that Morena actually needs, well, you need to come right over here to the Mournhold Trader, which is conveniently just on the other side of the Great Bazaar. Now, if you are trying to do this quest organically, there are actually three different options for you to choose from. Now, only one of the other options will reward you with an artifact, but it is nowhere near as interesting as the one that we are going to show today. And, well, the third option is completely useless for everyone but Morena. However, that's not why we're here. That's what Cupid is for, and we are not him. So let's come inside, and you will find Sinel Halas. And he has all the makings of a great candidate. I mean, just look at this guy. What could possibly be wrong with this guy? And now, now we're getting into why this is also a strange quest and not just a strange item. So let's open up Hanel's dialogue here and, and get, a, get a taste for what kind of guy he is. Hello there, I suppose you've come to trade, and that's fine with me. Azura knows there's little else in the world worth doing. None of the rest of it matters. Adventuring fame, women, it's all pointless. Brutal. <laughs> that's pretty freaking hardcore, but at least what Sanel lacks in mental health, he has in obscure artifacts that just make no sense. So let's continue down this path first by persuading Sinel. I do believe you need to have him over 60 disposition in order to get the quest dialogue, which is going to be by clicking on women. So let's first do that. Bah, women, there's no happiness to be found. No lasting happiness anyway. It's all a sham. And that, ladies and gentlemen, that is some freaking Bethesda quest writing. Just terribly depressing for this guy, <laughs> at least we can think in the back of our head, we're fixing Sinel. You know, this is an altruistic mission as well. Marina will end happy, Sinel will end happy, and will end happy. So everybody's a winner here. But in order to continue, let's go ahead and click foolishness and see that our journal now has been updated. Because now we know Sinel is a potential suitor because his wife freaking died when they came to Mornhold. Now, after we've come to terms with Sanel's situation here, we need to click women one more time and then finally inform him about Morena Gilneth. Although Sanel thinks it will be a bit of a waste of time, we need to give him some encouragement because not only is this quest strange in its writing, it is also strange in its mechanisms. But we'll get more into that here in just a bit. So let's run over back to Marina and let her know that uh, we have we have found a date. We've set her up with a great happy-go-lucky guy. What could go wrong? So Marina, let me tell you about meeting someone new. Tell her, yes, I am sure I have found you someone. And then we will throw the name Sinel Halas into the ring and she will propose that her and Sinel then meet at the Winged Guar here 
in two days. What a, what a romantic place. Maybe they're grabbing, grabbing a little Vardenfellian coffee or something, you know, getting to know each other. Do you like scribs? Do you like quamas? What kind of house pet are you into? I don't freaking know what they do in tribunal, okay? I'm not, I'm not plugged into Mornhold culture. But regardless of my lack of, uh, you know, social understanding of tribunal life, well, let's go ahead, head back into the trader. And like I mentioned before, this is where things get a little weird and I will explain once we get there. So let's go to Sanal Halas. Let's again queue up women, click on Morena Gilneth, and then here you can see him begrudgingly accepting to meet her. And now we get to talk about the strange mechanics here. So people often think of Morrowind's dice roll mechanics or random chance mechanics when it comes to, of course, combat. The dice roll system, percentages, baby. It's just like Dungeons and Dragons out here, okay? And I freaking love it. However, this quest is strange because it also has a chance to fail. So once we have gotten this, your journal has been updated Q. We want to click Morena Gilneth one more time and you will see again, three dialogue options popping up here. The first of which telling Snell to be a little more optimistic. That is gonna give us the highest chance at 67% for them to have a successful date and us to get our item. The second option, just be yourself, it will give him about a 50-50 coin flip shot. And the last chance, telling him stories about his late wife, well, that's not going to go over very well with his honey-to-be. So that is going to give you a 15% chance of success. Now, of course, we want the artifact. You're watching the video, so we're going to want to click Don't Act So Depressed, Try and Be Optimistic and get Sinel the 67% chance of success here. Now, once we have pumped up our freaking guy over here, giving him the old slap on the back, as is male tradition, let's step outside and uh, here we go. We're gonna grab a quick save. Because like I said, you have a chance to fail this quest. It is out of your hands. So you want to save before you wait the two days in case you need to reload and try again. So like I'm saying, I'm gonna grab a quick save here. And then now let's wait a uh, slightly past 48 hours so we have time for them to go on their date here. So here we are. 10 a.m. on the third day following their date. Let's see if we rolled the dice correctly. Sunel is back in the shop. And oh, buddy, old pal, what do you got for us? Sunel, did you do it, my friend? Let's ask him about the women. I told you nothing but a waste of time. Oh, come on. <laughs> you just saw it right there. That's the dice roll chance of this quest. We failed. So let's uh, let's run it back one more time. Let me load that safe. All right, I did 15 Hail Marys to Kirkbride this time before restarting. So let's see if, uh, let's see if we get get Sunel on the same page here. Come on, buddy. And women? Yes, well, I guess I have to rethink my opinion on a lot of things. Okay, okay, let's, uh, that's a good sign. Morena Gilneth? Boom! There we have it. The Bipolar Blade has been added to your inventory. And, well, look at this. Morena is just what I needed in my life. So, like I said, you get the dice roll chance right, everybody leaves freaking happy. Look at that, we're all, we're all winners today, okay? That's how we like to keep it on Coffee Night Gaming. And here we have it, ladies and gentlemen, the Bipolar Blade, one of the strangest, if not the strangest weapon in all of Morrowind. And that is not only because of its appearance, but because of the effect that is on it as well. So let's take a look real quick. If we hover over the blade, you can see here, chop five to 61, slash one to 50, thrust one to 35, with a value of 40,000 gold, and the namesake enchantment, cast when strikes, frenzy humanoid, 30 points for 15 seconds on touch, and calm humanoid, 30 points for 15 seconds on touch. Now you can obviously see, looking at that enchantment, why this has been called the Bipolar Blade, the combination of Calm and Frenzy being opposite sides of the coin. However, what the developers either missed or didn't care to fix is that the second ability of Frenzy never actually applies, leading this enchantment to essentially be useless. 
and potentially harmful. If you have started an engagement with a humanoid in a city, an example would be, you know, taunting someone into attacking you, using the bipolar blade on them will actually disengage them from combat by calming them down. Well, this is now a crime and you will be arrested for trying to finish the fight that you didn't start. So the bipolar blade is a potentially harmful thing to actually use if you're not out in the wastes adventuring alone. I mean, this will trigger if a bandit follows you back into a village, if you are doing one of the many quests where you have to kill a criminal within the city limits, there are a lot of potential pitfalls of actually using this blade in its intended way. But on the flip side, let's take a look at the stats again because this is one of the strongest blades in Morrowind when we're just looking at base stats. We have a chop of 5 to 61 on the Bipolar Blade, which actually makes it a stronger weapon than the Daedric Claymore. And might I mention, if you're already in Mournhold, an incredibly easy weapon to get. In fact, you could easily get this at level 1, killing a Dark Brotherhood character, doing a quick matchmaking exercise, and walking away with one of the strongest blades in the game, which is pretty insane. And another thing I want to note about the Bipolar Blade that makes it so incredibly cool, not just because it's an amazing blade with a totally strange enchantment and quest attached, but let's take a look at the sword itself. You can see that it has this strange black and yellow design. And although we don't actually have any lore attached to this blade officially, I think this is pretty clearly a creation of Shiagorath, with the black and gold sides being clear callouts to the Dark Seducers and the Golden Saints. I mean, it even has a face in the dark side, similar looking to something like the Wabajack. In anything that remains mysterious in Morrowind, but has a beautiful little breadcrumb like that, I think is just cool as hell and worthy of standing on its own. Now that we've talked a lot about what the Bipolar Blade is, we can look at this man's beautiful character model and now talk about what it can be. Because lucky for us, like many things in Morrowind, the modders have come to your rescue. Although, well, I shouldn't limit that to Morrowind, that's pretty much par for the course on basically every Bethesda game. But for the purpose of this video, let's talk about two mods in particular. Now, the first is called Less Useless Tribunal Artifacts by Grassid, and this is a pretty straightforward and simple mod. All it does is change our On Strike ability to a cast when used ability. So now you get to choose when that calm effect applies so you don't get yourself into a sticky situation when doing a quest in town, or like I mentioned, even just out fighting in the world when your target's a humanoid and there happens to be a guard around. Now, like I mentioned, all this does is turn our bipolar blade ability into a cast when used ability that you can see playing out right there, so I'm not risking my neck or potential jail time. Now the second mod that I want to talk about is something a little bit more interesting, and this one is called Reforging the Bipolar Blade, also by Grassid. I guess Grassid just really likes the Bipolar Blade, which I'm glad they do because they certainly have elevated it when it comes to gameplay. Now in order to start this mod, we must head to the Craftsman Hall here in the God's Reach section of Mournhold, and you will be talking to Bulls and Dalin, getting a dialogue option for the Bipolar Blade, and he will inform you that there is another adventurer out and about in Tribunal that has an exact mirrored copy of the Bipolar Blade. You can get that mirrored version, take it back to Bulls and Dalin, and what you will be left with in return is actually two new blades, and let's take a look at them here the Dark Polar Blade and the Light Polar Blade. And a standout feature of these dual swords is that they, of course, have the same base damage as the Bipolar Blade, that incredible 5 to 61, but they've also doubled their effects because you've combined two light sides and two dark sides together. And I must say, they look freaking awesome. I mean, come on. Come on. I really love what Grassid has done here with the reforging mod. It really has brought the Bipolar Blade into a more usable form, a more interesting form, and honestly, two swords is just better than one, if you ask me, especially when they both look this freaking cool. 
So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Everything you need to know about one of Morrowind's weirdest and wackiest artifacts, and of course, how to uh, improve it if you see its uh, base game version a little perplexing. If you enjoyed this video and want more Morrowind in your life, be sure to hit that big red button down there. And of course, friendly reminder that all Let's Play content now lives on the second channel. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I will catch you on the next one.